I used to use a vast, then a paid antivirus, but for the last eight years, I just haven't used one. And I would argue for most of you, antivirus software probably causes more harm than good. I'll touch on why, give the pros and cons, and make sure to stick around till the end to hear our tips to keep yourself safe from malware. All after a quick message from our sponsor. Part of keeping yourself safe online is using trusted services that keep your data secure. And that's what Notes Nook tries to provide for your notes, ideas, and thoughts. It's end-to-end -end encrypted, meaning that you own your own encryption keys and there is no need to ever have to trust Notes Nook as they cannot access your data. They're also available natively on pretty much any device you can think of. And even if it's not supported natively, they are supported in the web. So as long as you have access to a web browser, you have access to end-to-end -end encrypted notes, which means only you get to access your data and you get to do what you want with your thoughts. Check out Notes Nook down in the description. They're open source and they have a free plan to see if it's right for you. And I wanna thank them for sponsoring us. And now back to antiviruses. Security is the ultimate reason to use an antivirus. The name itself though is outdated with anti-malware being a more accurate description of threats as it includes worms, trojans, ransomware, spyware, and yes, viruses as well. Fortunately, Windows has significantly improved its security over the years, despite its history. With features like user account control, Windows Defender, smart screen, and more, you're pretty well off on Windows. Windows Defender specifically is anti-malware, though it's already integrated into the operating system and plays along really nicely with software. Using Windows with its default Windows Defender and the tips we'll lay out shortly is extremely powerful protection against many threats. Mac OS also has great security with built-in security features, including XD, ASLR, SIP, XProtect, and Gatekeeper, which are likewise their versions of native protection. Apple even acknowledges this on their site. And if you want to confirm that they're working, Silent Night is a piece of software that can show you the enabled security features on your Mac OS device. Similar to Windows, using macOS with native protection with our upcoming tips is really all you need for powerful security. Linux as a whole is simply less susceptible to malware in the first place, given its relatively low usage, making it a smaller target. And we can't forget mobile. Both iOS and Android are not designed in a way where most malware can do much damage, and more importantly, since they're so locked down, is also why an anti-malware app really can't do that much for you. Anti-malware on mobile operating systems is at best highly misleading since they cannot gain enough system access to guarantee the protection that they're promising. It's pretty safe to suggest just not using them on mobile, with the only exception I can find maybe being Hypedia on Android, which is an open source tool that doesn't overpromise anything. In short, most operating systems nowadays do not require a third-party antivirus to keep you safe. But that doesn't mean you're hack-proof or anything like that. Any anti-malware, paid or not, should be used as a safety net, since your behavior and everything else in front of it is a lot more important than the antivirus itself, which is why we're gonna cover some of those tips and what that looks like at the end of the video. So stick around. But let's say you're not convinced and security alone won't convince you. Let's go through some of the arguments I've heard. Henry, my antivirus software includes extra tools and gives me protection beyond malware. Now, yes, a lot of suites nowadays include things like VPNs, password managers, browsers, and more. However, just like Google can't make good products across its entire ecosystem, these antivirus suites generally aren't giving you the best versions of each tool. For example, Bitdefender comes with a VPN and password manager. These tools are fine and likely won't cause harm. However, there are much better password managers that are open source, implement the best security in the industry, and have a pretty solid reputation on their own. And these are free or at most a couple bucks a month. And their entire reason for existence is to just be a great password manager. That's it. Similarly, Bitdefender VPN is outshined by better services like Mulvad, iVPN, Proton VPN, and Windscribe, who are all open source and provide the best a VPN can be. Don't let the suites fool you into thinking there isn't something better out there. Okay, but Henry, I don't really wanna pick individual services. That's a lot of work. I just want a suite. I'm fine with it. 
And I will say it might feel like a lot of work, but it's really not, especially in the long run, since you'll be using better tools that will save you time, sanity, and money, and will probably work better on your operating systems. Also, we here at Techlore exist for this sole reason of making this easy for you. Our resources and guides give you multiple high quality options for varying degrees of experience and knowledge and break it down clearly so you can find what you need in just minutes. Okay, but my antivirus has been fine and kept me safe for a long time, so why would I bother changing anything? And yes, I think this is valid, right? I mean, if nothing's really gone wrong, why would you change it? And antiviruses typically will keep you safe enough, but that doesn't mean there aren't some drawbacks you should consider, five in particular. First, most will cost money, given they're not necessary in the first place in most situations, and if they're free, you should ask why they're free. Second, they cost resources. Antiviruses are active constantly and love to scan at the worst times. Third, what I was alluding to in the first one, privacy. A commonly undiscussed downside to antiviruses is the amount of data they collect to offer the protection they claim to offer. They can view and access your sensitive files, and especially the free services have very invasive privacy policies. This is in addition to many apps, including third-party trackers. When you're using a native antivirus like Windows Defender that comes with your operating system, it's data that Microsoft is already collecting anyway, so you're not adding extra people to the mix. Fourth, false sense of safety. A lot of people with dedicated antivirus solutions see false promises of safety and might feel safer than they probably should, which can encourage reckless behavior and even take the place of proper hygiene that will actually keep you safer. And fifth, efficacy. False positives are extremely common and antiviruses will still struggle with issues like zero days, where a vulnerability is not yet known by the public. Additionally, antiviruses themselves have very deep access to your operating system, which in itself makes them a perfect target. And this is something researchers are especially concerned about, and we might see more instances of them being manipulated in this way going forward. So with my main reasons to avoid antiviruses out of the way, when might a third-party antivirus actually be useful? I only have two potential use cases I wanted to throw your way. First, companies who feel they can benefit from widespread deployment of an antivirus suite to just try to guarantee a base level of protection in a corporate environment for their employees and the company. I think this is why Microsoft releases Windows Defender for all operating systems, including Linux, but only for enterprise customers. Not a lot of people know that, but I think that's why they only do it for enterprise. The second use case is maybe someone who truly, truly just struggles with technology. In an event that you as a bystander of this or you yourself feel like you struggle, if you trust your antivirus more than yourself or this other person, then maybe it makes more sense. But even in this situation, I'd be more inclined to suggest giving you or them a restricted non-administrative account. So like a guest account on your Windows computer or using a more limited secure by default device like a Chromebook or iPad that would make it practically impossible for you to install something malicious unless you're really trying to. Those are the only two scenarios I can really think of, and I think that in itself speaks to this issue. But what I'm always going to recommend is a short list of tips to ensure safety regardless of the safety net or antivirus that you choose to use. First, keep operating systems and software up to date. This is critical for getting the newest security patches. Utilize full disk encryption on your devices. Use the latest technologies like HTTPS when browsing websites to keep you safer. Use extensions like uBlock Origin and AdGuard to block nasty things on the internet. Make sure to keep backups. If anything happens to your data or if anything slips up, you're going to be grateful for them. We recommend the 3 2, 1 backup strategy, which has plenty of resources on how to achieve. Use strong, unique passwords with a trusted password manager or whatever system works well for you. I use ProtonPass and I really enjoy it and I talked about that more in a dedicated video. We also recommend implementing good digital hygiene, which means don't click on links you don't know, get software from official sources, be aware of phishing attacks in your email inbox and when logging into your sensitive accounts, 
only give minimum permissions required for your software, install and use as few services as you need, and just generally be vigilant and try to keep up with news. I host a podcast where we talk about weekly news called Surveillance Report. So that's a great place to kind of keep yourself updated in a really simple format that condenses it all for you. We also have a lot more tips in our Become Anonymous guide. A lot more tips. It's like 30 minutes, but these are decent starting points for this video that when combined with your operating system's native protections gives you massive security and depth. As someone who's in the business of keeping people safe online, I see a lot of questions and misinformation around antiviruses that I hope I was able to clear up in this video. And I hope the takeaway is that you have a lot more power than you think you do, and that you yourself can significantly enhance your online security without relying on traditional antivirus software. I wanna thank our sponsor, Notesnook, who's open source and end-to-end -end encrypted and gives you control of your data. I wanna thank our patrons who make all of this content accessible and free for all of you. And I also wanna push all of you to check out our Become Anonymous guide, which is a very thorough guide that will teach you a lot more about the world of privacy, security, and anonymity hosted by ourselves. See you there. We'll see you next time on TechLore.